Greetings from Australia. It's our evening here. And thanks to everyone who's come in from around the world. Um, I'm one of the co-coordinators um, with Professor Karen Butler Henderson, who's our director of the Digital Health Hub. RMIT is the hosting organization for the ecosystem and also the front door for our external partners. I sit in our research and innovation portfolio, looking at industry engagement and partnerships. Um, I do want, Andy, you mentioned this, but I would um, refer everyone to the fabulous new Alliance webpage um, and go and see the recording there um, that Karen made in terms of the overall um, uh, uh, ecosystem here in Australia. It's it's about 20 minutes and it's absolutely comprehensive. And so I think it's a good landing spot for you to get an overview. I'm going to be focusing today on wearables and wearables and point of care diagnostics. The Digital Health Hub is our front door. Um, it's really for our engagement with external partners and it's the way that the ecosystem is anchored at RMIT. Um, but why should we be your kind of ecosystem of choice when you're looking to Australia? And I think um, what's really interesting about RMIT and what I want to focus on is kind of five pillars. Um, really, when we talk about uh, wearables and uh, nearables, but really it's that we're focusing on developing our sovereign manufacturing um, and prototyping capabilities here in Victoria. Victoria is one of the states in Australia. Um, we have incredible design capabilities. We are number one in terms of our school of design in Australia, and we're number 15 in the world. Um, so in terms of um, industrial product design, service design, we're really one of the top notch. We also have world-class researchers um, really who are driving innovation in health, and we go from digital to med tech and really the full spectrum. Um, we're one of um, one of a unique position that we have because we really have a global footprint. So I worked for three years at RMIT in our European office, which is in fact how I met Andy um, in terms of EU funding. Um, we also have our footprint in Vietnam, and we're also in a local ecosystem with a lot of other organizations. Last, um, we go from vocational education to higher education um, and really have world-class um, research and education, everything. Thing. We're one of the top online delivery um, channels for education in digital and in um, digital health and med tech. Um, and we do multidisciplinary. We've got platforms um, that really connect different organizations. So we're very happy um, to, to, you know, to have that expertise. I'm trying to go through fast because I know we've got a couple of other people who are going to be chatting. Um, really, our digital health hub and why we're talking about devices is that there's digital in everything in terms of diagnostics, devices, drugs, and biologics. And so that definition under the FDA, it's why it makes sense to talk about a prototyping facility today. We're... Um, I thought it was really interesting to see that a recent conference they've renamed to Sensor and Systems for Digital Health. Um, this is the IEEE that was just held, I think, about two weeks ago in Boston. And they're re really rethinking what, what sensing and systems are for digital health. And we think you need a truly multidisciplinary approach. Um, when you're building these technologies. And these are areas that we're very strong in, the wearables, nearables, point of care, data processing, analytics, AI, bioelectronics, bioprinting, drug delivery. Now to get back to our design, we really anchor quite a bit through our wearables and sensing network. And we bring this cross-disciplinary group um, from across our three colleges. So we've got our business college, our design college, and our STEM. And they're really anchored um, with industrial designers, product designers, service designers, user experience. And to just give you, I know it's going to be, here's some samples of what our, our designers do and make. But um, the expertise, and I know it's really hard to read this spider um, chart, but you can see it's from materials, big data, the platforms, and this is what they kind of pull together, the designers in terms of supporting what we do. But I'm very, very excited today to really share with you, we'll be opening our doors probably in late November of this year, which is a new um, prototyping and scale-up facility that's called Discovery to Device. And um, 
I just wanted to give you a bit of context um, why we received about $15 million from the government. Um, it was matched with money from from the university to create a um, prototyping facility because in Australia and probably in a, nub a number of regions around the world, it's really hard to get through what we call this valley of death, the gap to manufacturing. So universities can make, you know, they can make small runs of sensors, but actually what you need in terms of getting investors excited about your sensors and technologies is that you have enough of a run up to 10,000 perhaps or 5,000 um, that you can go and test clinically. And that's where it's very hard for you to go to a contract manufacturing organization and to try to get that run so that you can go and say, I have the evidence, it works, please use this device. And so that valley of death is what we're trying to kind of bridge with the prototyping facility. Um, it's wearables, nearables, everything outside the body, nothing in terms of implantables. And um, it's basically has all of the, you know, the offering of the facility in terms of med tech manufacturing expertise. You'll have expert staff who can um, execute your projects. Um, we've got um, the design teams. We have um, a whole network of, of experts that startups can have access to. And this is where you can scale up for volume to support your field trials and to really um, also have it done in a facility from end to end that has ISO 9001 QMS, as well as um, ISO 13, 14, 485 for med tech devices and electronic integration. Where do we fit? And I thought what's a really interesting since we're always talking about ecosystem so ecosystem to ecosystem victoria's created an ecosystem so we don't overlap with our facilities and what we're offering and what we want to present to the world um, and so each um, facility that you find in victoria is going to be complementary to the others as i mentioned we're doing wearables nearables out of you know outside the body neobionica is implantables inside the body um, the uh, vaccine and delivery um, devices, that's the AN, the Australian National Fabrication Facility. The ACMD is 3D printing and biomaterials and bioengineering. So that's how it kind of fits wow. as an ecosystem. Oh, is there a question? No. Oh, I just heard something. Okay. I'm not going to get into the technical, just that you understand. I'm going to give you the really basics from our professor. Wow. Any, any sensor? has four components, right? You've got the uh, biosensor, you've got you've got to functionalize it to actually what what it's measuring, right? The target, it's got to be wireless with the electronics. And then the last, it's got to be enclosed in something. Yeah, so that's really in a very simple way sensors. Um, I'm really happy to set up meetings with our facility director. So if you've got any technical people who want to have, you know, more in depth as to what we do in the amber lab, the blue lab, the red lab, the green mm -hmm. lab, and this is external facing um, just for all industry. Um, this is not an internal um, center. It is external facing to the world, to startups, SMEs, industry, multinationals who need to come in and use the facilities. Um, I We have this online, but um, I will be happy to share this where you can have a little more information about the different rooms huh? and what they do. Um, last, we're looking at partnerships. So uh, you know, it's the it's the typical partnership mechanisms um, in terms of what we can do with industry, um, what kinds of programs we're going to have. Those are our targets. It's other universities, industry, um, peak bodies, agencies, and international partners, which is why we're here um, talking about the digital health um, ecosystem and where we can partner and see synergies. Where do we see ecosystem partnerships? We'd love to build um, and get from the ecosystems here today, really to understand what gaps and needs you have and where we can fit in, in terms of the prototyping facility, referral networks, 
Um, there are ways that with international grants that there can be um, submissions. We've already done with the in Monheim, Germany, that has a whole med tech startup and digital health, um, Monheim Next, um, that's in that area. We've done workshops. Um, and participated in innovation conferences there, bringing our designers and engineers to groups that were in Germany. Um, we can help with network introductions. There's going to be some co-location, so we're exploring um, if people want to come in quickly to just do some testing, do some co-location. And we'd love to grow a network of sister facilities. We also think there's an opportunity for um, talent exchange. Um, and we realize that things are globally local, right? So there's a regional nexus in terms of what we where we are in Australia and also in the up here, Susan. Huh? Could you wrap things up? Because we've got we got a couple oh, yeah. of them. That's it. Okay. That was it. Who do you need contact? <laughs> Excellent. These are so. the contacts. And then also remember we want your feedback on it. And remember that we can participate in European funding projects and you can Excellent. use the facilities. That's it. I've